Now Habersham is proud to sponsor interviews with the candidates for the May 24th political primaries. We hope by viewing these personal interviews, you'll get to know the candidates who will be making decisions that impact your life, your family, and your livelihood here at the local and state level in Georgia. We hope you'll vote May 24th, and we hope you'll be more informed in that process by hearing from the candidates themselves in these one-on-one -on -one interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. Hi, I'm Dick Stafford, and this is Now Habersham. Today, we're visiting with Don Corbett, the incumbent of the Board of Education for District 1 of Habersham County. Welcome, Don, to Now Habersham. Thanks. Good to see you. Well, let's start off with your uh, background, your formal education. Tell us a little bit about your formal education and how it has uh, made you prepared to be a, a board member of the uh, uh, Habersham Schools. Well, my wife, who's an educator in our system, uh, she... she uh, she says, uh, I'm a lifelong learner. I uh, completed my degree at uh, Piedmont College Walker School of Business at the uh, young age of 49. And, um, you know, uh, I've been in the past, I've been a, a general contractor. Uh, I was a real estate broker. I've always been in business, always been in the private sector. Uh, have, have, uh, uh, I'm the only private sector employee, as a matter of fact, on the school board uh, presently. Mm -hmm. What about informal? Uh things you've gained from activities, groups, organizations, experiences you've had, travel. What are, what are some other things that maybe have helped prepare you to help lead our local schools? Well, uh, I've been a coach. You know, I'm uh, very active uh, in our local soccer uh, program. Um, and, uh, you know, raising, a, uh, uh, raising children will make you learn a lot. Um, I kept up with my son probably until about uh, eighth grade in math. <laughs> Uh, and he's a uh, uh, graduating senior. Uh, so, um, you know, that and being married to a school teacher, you know, you learn a great deal about what the system needs, uh, you know, through those experiences. Now, you're an incumbent, so you've been here a while, but what, um, what goals would you see in the coming years for Habersham Schools? And let me preface this by saying when I moved here 27 years ago, there was not a new school in this county, and most of them were not air conditioned and most of them were out date at that time. And I'm pretty impressed with the collection of physical buildings we have now, but what, what goals down the line would you see for the school system? Well, our facilities are maintained um, impeccably. I mean, every school that I've been into, uh, besides just the building and the, uh, the mechanical operation of it, uh, the, uh, uh, what our uh, school teachers and administrators do at each individual school to make uh, to give the, the students ownership of those schools that decorated with their work and everything like that is very impressive. Um, but as, as far as goals, we're going to uh, you know continue building with our uh, meet our meeting our strategic plan, um, which we didn't have a strategic plan when uh, I first came on the board. Um, it was one of the first questions I had: is where are we going? You know, I know we have a mission, uh, but that's something that the current board has built. Uh, we're going to maintain um, our uh, status as a quality board. We were just recently. Uh, Habersham County School Board was just recently uh, 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 named a quality Georgia uh, board. Um, and obviously uh, budget issues are, are always our uh, uh, focus to balance revenues um, and expenses, and that's probably the biggest challenge. Uh, and, and of course, uh, academic achievement. But we had a, a great deal of success uh, in the three years that I've been on the board uh, through student achievement, um, uh, financial uh, efficiencies, uh, uh, security and safety. I mean, from partnering with the Habersham County Sheriff's Office, we used to have our own police department. Didn't understand that when I first came on the board. We, in my opinion, got a better uh, safety uh, uh, situation right now and have saved money. Whenever you can get something better and save money, you just can't beat that. Um, and our, our plans for the future are to just to maintain all of that progress and continue that progress. When my sons played football for Habersham Schools uh, and soccer, 
And by the way, it was called the football field, not the athletic field, That's which right. would include soccer. That's right. In fact, at first, they wouldn't allow soccer to be played on the football field in <laughs> Habersham County. We would tear it up, they said. Well, but, now we invite everybody yeah, no, to play do. on that new yeah. field. I was about to ask you. Right. And I'm, I'm friends with some young people in the high school and was asking them that same question. Tell us a little bit about the new athletic field. And uh, there was a little bit of controversy about the cost of it, but uh, maybe this is an opportunity for you to talk about that. Well, the uh, uh, improved athletic facilities was uh, is part of our strategic plan, and it surveys that we did with um, you know our students, and that's why we're here is for the students. Uh, you know, improved ac uh, athletic facilities was a, a key uh, element of uh, the result of all the surveys, and um, th nothing really has been done with that field you know, other than you know mowing and fertilizing and that sort of thing since 1972. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've had up until now is we've had to kind of manage who can't go on the field, as you say with soccer. And now we, we're going to have a calendar of just lining up who, you know, who can go. Members of the community, of course, the Band of Blue will be able to you know, practice on the field, imagine that. Uh, and we'll be able to hold competitions there. We've never been able to do any of that because of overuse on the field. This is going to benefit you know, not just uh, our, our school system, but the entire community. Uh, one thing I want to point out is this was local money. It was not SPLOS. It was uh, you know, one of the other school board candidates mentioned that it was SPLOS money. It was not SPLOS money. This is from our uh, capital expenditures, uh, a special account that was set up years ago and has been added to, um, and it takes a, a, a resolution by the, by the sitting board to use that money. Um, and ha the way that Mr. Cooper and staff uh, handle this the, uh, through a committee process, uh, including not just you know, school administrators. It was, uh, you know, coaches, community members, uh, teachers, uh, our CFO. She's pretty much on every committee that we have. Uh, but it was, so it was a collaborative effort. And um, I don't know if you've been out there yet or not, but uh, it's, you know, I've seen a couple of so uh, soccer games. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to uh, the fall when the entire community can come out on Friday nights and, you know, cheer on the Raiders. There's been talk about on, as an educator my entire life, uh, and mostly in university setting, but also public school, uh, a lot of talk about the federal government's involvement in local education, which over the years has flip-flopped back and forth with a lot of attention, then no attention, and it's just always something. Um, and then within our own state, we have had over the years discussions about uh, QEBs and, 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 and how we educate young people here. What are your thoughts about the content of education and who should guide that and what uh, testing might should happen and uh, how Habersham County fits into all that? Well, what, we, what our teachers work with is the uh, Georgia Standards of Excellence mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe that's where it needs to be. Uh, you need some sort of a, a standard uh, uh, developed, you know, uh, locally. Th these are Georgia's standards. Um, and when I, I encourage anyone to look at the standards, they're available on the internet, and I don't see uh, really any controversy. It's, it's uh, you know, issues such as teaching a, uh, a first grader that uh, 10 pennies equal a dime, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I've not seen anything controversial about the sure. Georgia standards, and they're our own. Uh, you need standards, and this is, this is just a minimum benchmark, just a start. Um, our teachers need to know what we expect them to teach, especially if we're going to be evaluating them. Um, and there's all sorts of talk about merit-based pay and sort of that sort of thing. We need to, they need to know what is expected of them. You know, folks moving into the community want to know that their students will, you know, their children will be receiving some level, uh, some basic level of, you know, especially uh, ELA and uh, math, uh, uh, competency. So I'm in favor of standards, um, and, and I'm not at all in favor of, a, of any sort of a federal, you know, push, you know, as they, that's called Common Core or whatever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like to, uh, you know, associate the two, you know, our standards with, with uh, Common Core, you know, and as a matter of fact, someone in, in the school board race have said they are not in favor of uh, the Georgia standards. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I will, I, you know, our teachers are required uh, to teach to the standards, and I fully support the standards. What about uh, funding? Uh, the budget, property taxes, the amount of money you have to work with to do what you wish or feel like you need to do, and the teachers feel like they need to do. How, how are we in Habersham County? How well, do you see that? There's never enough, you know. But uh, the, uh, the state funding, obviously, you know, uh, 
suffered through the recession. Uh, it's back on a, uh, as a matter of fact, the governor just, you know, recently announced and we were able to include on our, our budget a, uh, a reduction in those cuts, um, which, you know, through the conservative spending uh, practices that we've had for the last, you know, few years, we were able to take and dedicate that, uh, those additional funds uh, to teacher, you know, teacher pay increases. Um, we're very reliant upon the state uh, revenue. Uh, mm -hmm. Some systems are not, are not. Uh, but you know, Habersham County is very reliant on that. So when we, you know, when we have cuts in that funding, and, and again, this funding, that formula is uh, QBE is from 1981 with no, uh, no real change to it since then. We know things have changed since then. But uh, you know, that all is going to be you know revisited on, uh, currently, you know, by the state as how schools are funded. Uh, but I'm c confident that we are working as efficient as possible and we really are you know our budget uh, the the local system has not discretion but we only have about 10 percent that isn't uh, salaries mm -hmm. um, so but yes we are very reliant upon the state and those cuts hurt us uh, we're back on a positive trend I think this year it was just uh, right around three quarters of a million dollars that we haven't been fully funded uh, but still uh, considering that able to, for the first time since 2008, 2009, have a full calendar uh, for students, full seat time for students, mm -hmm. and a uh, uh, full calendar for the teachers, and a pay increase for all staff. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a little bit about statistics, and you don't have to give statistics. I, I failed to tell you any about bringing that, but um, there, uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about graduation rates. So. Maybe talk a little bit about what percentage of our students go on to college or, say, uh, the technical college, or what's the graduation rate? What is happening in Haversham County with those kinds of statistics? Well, um, through uh, Mr. McGee's leadership at the, uh, at the high school and every teacher and every administrator at the high school, uh, we've had a record high graduation rate of 88.5%, uh, uh, I That's believe. That's pretty magnificent. Right, and uh, the initial uh, 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 expectations are for our CCRPI scores at the high school to be uh, to, to uh, realize a tremendous uh, increase. We'll see as those are released very soon. Well, that's all great news, but I agree with you. I mean, college, uh, not everyone uh, is a candidate for college. And, and Mr. Cooper, our superintendent, likes to say we want pr to prepare students for uh, uh, college, a career, or the military. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, it's, it's very important. As a matter of fact, our CTAE department, Jonathan Stribling over there, they just mm, probably two weeks ago announced a, a new cosmetology program, which we're going to have students in, in that program there. It's something that students have asked about. Uh, they will be able to leave uh, high school and, and go out and immediately uh, uh, with, cert, uh, with wow. a certificate. That's good. Right. And, and it used to be you'd have to go to the trade school. To right, right. Or, but then, and this is a, some other school. Right. Well, the trade school. And this is a partnership with North Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those kinds of things are what we're, you know, working for. We're, we realize every student does not need to, you know, uh, incur that debt that's, in, mm -hmm. you know, uh, involved with college. If they want to, they can do like I do and pay for it over time. And it may take a while. <laughs> How, even though you've been, a, been there in this job already, uh, in the coming in the, in the coming days in the future, how will Habersham schools and the county and our community be different that Don Corbett is there? Well, uh, without my involvement, without my voice on the board, we will have uh, four retired educators. Uh, I value educators, love educators. My wife is one. I remember, uh, as you probably heard me say last night, my favorite teacher of all time was Mrs. Hill in sixth grade at Portsmouth Elementary. Uh, but I think the board needs balance. Um, I am the voice of uh, uh, the free market and business. Um, I've, I've sat on the uh, energy committee. I've been involved with the agribusiness, uh, uh, the agri center committee. Um, and without uh, representation for all taxpayers, uh, you have an imbalance on the board. Um, and I don't think there's anybody that feels that uh, retired educators are underrepresented on the board. Uh, so that's what I bring to the board. We've been visiting uh, with Don Corbett, the incumbent of the Habersham County School Board, and uh, we wish you luck, Don. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good being here.
This is now Habersham, and we're visiting this afternoon with Doug Westmoreland, a candidate for the Board of Education of Habersham for District uh, 1. Glad to have you with us, Doug. Thank you, Dick. So let's begin talking about your formal education. Doug, what are some things that you could tell us uh, about your formal education that have prepared you for being a member of the BOE? Well, Dick, uh, in 1984, I graduated from the University of Georgia with a bachelor's degree in mathematics education. Uh, in 1993, I went back to North Georgia College uh, up in Delano and got my master's degree in mathematics education. In 2003, I went back to the University of Georgia and got my specialist degree in mathematics education. And then in 2008, I went to North Georgia College and got my master's degree, my specialist degree, excuse me, in uh, leadership and um, uh, administrative. Uh, so that is my uh, that's my educational experience that uh, that I have, uh, and I hopefully will be able to use a lot of that to bring to the table. Sure. So let's talk about informal experience, and informal education, uh, volunteer activities, hobbies, things you enjoy doing, or or just things that you have learned from outside of a classroom that that make you a qualified member for the BOE. Well, that's a, I, I'm glad you asked that because. Uh, with my 31 years experience here in Habersham County, uh, 28 years in the mathematics classroom at Habersham Central High School, 25 years coaching, I was the head coach of four varsity sports, and uh, been an administrator for three years at the Alternative School and Success Academy, and also been a key club advisor for almost 30 years and, and being a state key club uh, district administrator, I have developed many, many, many relationships. Uh, I think the people uh, have uh, they know me as being trustworthy, being loyal. Uh, they can trust me for sure. Uh, if I do what I say, they know I'm going to do what uh, I ask them, uh, what I would do. And um, we, you know, it just just the experience of, of developing those relationships over those many years, Dick, I think would be very beneficial to bring to the board. Mm -hmm. What do you think is a, if you, if you were elected, uh, what is the number of one thing you would focus on or a problem you think you'd like to solve? maybe the first thing you would sort of do? What, what, what's our most urgent situation? Well, uh, the roles and duties of a board member, there's only uh, really about four things, and that's to keep the vision of the school system uh, as it grows, uh, to make sure the, the student achievement is met, uh, to hire a good superintendent, and I have to compliment Mr. Cooper's done a great job, and also to... Uh, um, you know, manage or approve a multi-million dollar budget. We don't actually do the budget, we will approve it. We got a great staff, Stacy Newcomb and Holly Roberts, all them do a great job of getting everything. The teachers with the zero balance budget, they, they do all the work there uh, of getting their budget submitted and the board will approve that. So the, the board, the, I think the Habersham County School System, are, they're in, it's in great shape. Uh, they have done a lot of things here recently. Uh, I think that, um, that there's, there, there's no one issue that I would like to do to try to correct or anything. I just want to keep improving the school system. Uh, um, I want to support our students, to support our, our, our teachers. Uh, I think with the experience that I have been in, in, in education for so long, when those teachers come to the board or the students or the athletes or the administrators, I feel like that I will be able to at least have the issues and stuff at hand that I can relate to my board members and stuff and let them know. Not that we'll do everything they ask. I don't want the people to think that just because I'm being an advocate that we're just going to do everything they want, but that we'll at least I will know the issues uh, and I'll be able to relay that to my board members. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved my family here 27 years ago. Yes. As a matter of fact, you, you coached uh, my, Daniel, one of my sons, yes. maybe the other one yeah. too, I don't know. Uh, but uh, when Daniel was on the basketball team and also on the football team, yes. uh, the, uh, the athletic field was known as the football field, and we were just beginning <laughs> soccer, and I remember the soccer team was not allowed to play on the football field, right. even for games, right. because it was uh, determined we would, we, the soccer team would tear up the field. Right. <laughs> Which for We've life of me, ways. I can't figure out yes. how the yes. soccer team could do that. But, yes. Um, so that's the question now. We, ha we have a, a new field and it's changing and I guess there are even some more improvements planned. Uh, and the students are very excited about it. I know three or four students who play on the field and they were telling me just last week, uh, in fact, they wanted me to come see the field. Right. So tell me a little bit as a BOE member, uh, how you, what you think about this? Uh, well, uh, I had the opportunity to get on the field uh, a couple weeks ago at Special Olympics. I've been doing Special Olympics for 30 something years. I love doing that. 
and I had an opportunity to get down on the field, and it is just a wonderful, wonderful facility. Uh, I think it was much needed to, to upgrade that facility. Uh, nothing had really been done to it since 1971 when it was built. Yeah. And you know, Dick, as well as I do, as, as we grow and as times change, uh, we need to have uh, more competitive facilities like with other schools and stuff. And our kids were going to other school systems and stuff and seeing the nice facilities and, and, and playing on turf and stuff. And, and uh, we needed to upgrade so we could you know, have a level playing field there so that we could practice and be prepared for those facilities. And um, I, I, I think it's wonderful that our soccer team and, and our track team, I mean, uh, I'm the type of person that I feel like that when we have a facility that we use it for a multifunctional facility so that, uh, that, our, that all of our athletes can use it and be proud of it. Mm -hmm. Doug, the, uh, being on the uh, school board or other public service positions in our county uh, can eat up a lot of time. So do you have time to commit to being a board member? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my wife and I, my wife and I retired last May, so I'm retired, uh, and I do not have any other business that I'm currently working with, and so I'll be able to devote my entire time and energy to the board. Um, you know, and I just want to point out too, Dick, that uh, that there, being a board member, I, I want the public to know that not only will I bring that educational experience of being a teacher and a coach and an administrator. But I am very knowledgeable on issues uh, that are at hand uh, that would be detrimental to our, our system here in Habersham County. And that's one of the reasons that's motivating me mm -hmm. to get in there is because I, don't, I want to protect our Habersham County school system. It's a great system. I, I'm proud that my, my children went through and graduated here. And uh, I, I, I just want to be able to protect it from things like uh, more governmental control, Common Core, um, IB, which is a, a European-based curriculum. I, I really firmly believe in local control, and we need to do what Habersham County needs, not what other school systems need. I, um, I was interested in that, that issues that came up in the newspapers because I don't have children in the school system yes. anymore, so I don't really know much about it. And you, you probably don't know this about me, but I'm actually an IB teacher trained to level three, which means I can teach other teachers to right. be an IB and got that certification in Atlanta a few years back in between college jobs. I was sort of shocked and surprised the first time I saw the article in the mm -hmm. paper about IB, and I thought, whoa, that's interesting. And, I, and then I got thinking about it, and my wife, who you may know is a principal, Christian, and yeah. so we, we were both chatting about that. And it, it seemed a little bit unusual for Habersham County. It didn't seem like a fit maybe I, uh, that I, um, I was shocked by it a little bit, yes. and but having taught in IB and taught teachers in IB, um, I uh, I know some of the good positive things. There are also some negative things about yes. it. A lot of the kids who don't reach out to become IB certificate earners, and not everyone does, right. only a small right. portion oh, right. does. You, not everybody gets an IB certificate. Right. Those kids can kind of be left out of that process. Absolutely. And if the whole school's teaching in IB, they're, they're involved in something that they will never have on their certificate. Right. So there are, there are issues there. Um, is the issue gone is the question. Well, uh, I want people to realize that uh, I know that the paper stated that the board has put this issue aside and, is, and, and they are pursuing the AP capstone. But yeah, it, it's, yeah. Just, it's just hard to believe, though, that, uh, that after a year and a half of really pursuing the IB and looking at the process and stuff, then just to, 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 to put it on the table, uh, at this point, it, it, I feel like that it could be raised back up again. I mean, if it, if they can cut it off, it could probably be, you know be resurrected again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know there's some good aspects to the IB, but the thing is, it goes back to governmental control. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a firm believer of local control, mm -hmm. and I don't want some uh, European country dictating the uh, the curriculum, uh, grading the papers, mm -hmm. and things of this nature. Uh, and it's like you said, not everybody gets that IB diploma. As a matter of fact, the the, the the rate is very low because it is a very rigorous, uh, sure. but and it is rewarding if they get it. Uh, but the AP is uh, right up there with the IB. Uh, matter of fact, my daughter uh, did not have an IB, and she she graduated second in her class and went to University of Georgia and got in. Uh, she's getting her doctorate degree next week. Going to be an ear uh, an ear doctor, mm -hmm. and we're proud of her. But you know, there's opportunities. I even asked Nancy Hickenbottom at the high school how many people. You know, I think the biggest thing was it gives students more of, of, of an opportunity to get into college. 
and some uh, in some students, right, and especially the Ivy League schools. But I asked Ms. Higginbottom the other day uh, how many has actually applied, and she said she can count on her hands how many has even applied to those. So do we change the whole system uh, just to cater to the needs for one or two or just one percent of the student body when we really need to really concentrate on the rest of the student body's needs? Uh, if you're elected to a District 1 uh, spot on the BOE, how will it be different uh, in the future with Doug Westmoreland on the board? Well, again, it goes back to what I said earlier. I'm going to bring relationships to the board of the people. The community will trust me. Uh, I think I'll bring that piece of the pie that I meant. Uh, I'm a people person, Dick. Uh, I'm going to get out, and I, and I like to talk to people. Uh, I like to be a people person and, and to find out what, they, what the needs are and try to do everything I can to help support those. Um, but I really do feel like the, the biggest thing I'll bring to the board is experience uh, from all the different things I said earlier, plus the knowledge of these uh, detrimental uh, uh, programs and stuff that could affect our, our, ha our Habersham County school system. And then just the fact that, uh, that I just enjoy giving back. You know, I, uh, Habersham's been so good to me for 31 years and, and provided my family with the life that we have. And, and I just want to give something back to Habersham County, and this is the avenue that I can. Thanks. We've been speaking and visiting with Doug Westmoreland, a candidate for District 1 of the Habersham Board of Education. Doug, we wish you good luck. Thanks so much. We hope you've benefited from these interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. And we want to remind you, be sure to vote May 24th.